Today's demonstration is uh, one that you can do with a lot of uh, in a lot of areas in your in your school. Uh, it, in the state of Massachusetts where I live, we have a state test, and equilibrium is one of the topics on the test. And it's not necessarily a topic that get, gets covered in our uh, in all our chemistry courses. Our higher level courses it gets covered pretty well, but in our low level courses it does not. And so this is a nice, uh, very safe lab because we're going to be using uh, household material. We're going to be using some uh, Schweppes uh, seltzer water. And one little tip here is uh, don't use um, uh, club soda because the actual the sodium carbonate is actually buffered and it will not work so make sure you just use seltzer water which is just water is just plain carbonated water okay uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some of the seltzer water into a small beaker and you have to kind of be careful depending on what kind of seltzer you get because there's a lot of carbon dioxide dissolved in there and some I've squirted myself in the face a few times and of course the kids like that a lot but I don't necessarily like it that much. And then we're going to add a universal, uh, we're going to add an indicator called Brom Cresol Green, which has, uh, if we look at our chart over here, which has, if you, uh, if you do pHs in increments of 0.2, you can get a nice series of color ranges uh, from 3.8 all the way down to 5.2. And so we're going to add some. Rome Cresol Green to that. Did you get a good shot of this, by the way? Okay. And I'll just grab this for a second. And if we hold it up, you can see that it's not quite there, but it's pretty close. So right now, the pH of the seltzer water is about 3.8. And then I'm going to use syringes, and again, I always have to remind my syringes, uh, my students, sorry, my students what syringes are for. Um, they're not squirt guns. Now, first thing they do, and I let them do this, first thing they want to do is they want to pull the, pull the syringe out and pop their, pop their tops off. Wow, these are good tip caps. Let's try another one. So I let them do that, but then I tell them they got to find their, they got to find their, Wow, wow, these are great. Okay, well then they don't have to do that. Um, so I let, them, I let them just move the, oh they do this a lot, of course. You know, they like to go pop, pop. All right, so we're gonna take a little bit of syringe, about two milliliters, and we're, um, and the uh, Brom Cresol Green, we're gonna take a little bit of that, and we're gonna put this in the syringe, about two milliliters. All right, that my water should be hot enough. I'll turn that down. Okay. So if we can take a look at that. And I always tell them they want to be like Dr. Kildare. You know, just until a little drop of uh, the uh, seltzer and the Rome Crystal Green appears. All right, and then you can either do this ahead of time or you can do this for your students, but you can make little uh, charts in a one by eight strip and you can do basically, uh, in the activity, there's recipes for making the buffer. Uh, and it's just a ratio of two, comp two compounds. And as we go through this, then you can see that it looks pretty much like my chart over here. Not quite. And that's why I like using the strips, because this is what the kids are actually going to be used. So, so at this point, then, I can hold this up. And the kids can get a pretty good gauge about where the, where the pH is on their uh, syringe. All right. So I tell them what you want to do is you want to pull the syringe back, not all the way out, tap it, and see if you can get a color change. So what I'm doing by tapping it is I'm disturbing the equilibrium in there. I'm reestablishing a new equilibrium. All right, and then if I we can get a close-up of that, right about there. And if I force the CO2 back in, and this is why these tip caps are great, because I can force that back in. Shake, shake, shake. And so I can go back and forth. And so the students can go back and forth. And that's really what an equilibrium is about. It's being able to go uh, one side to the other. All right. Another syringe, that one's leaking. All right. So what I would, uh, in the... Uh, 
activity, what I, they'll, they'll ask me, well, how far can we go? Can we go to all the way to blue? So that's what we're going to try to do. All right, so I'll hold that up, pull it down, tap, 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 tap. Okay, and if I remove the top and force the CO2 out, and then pull back again, and again, tap, 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 tap. Okay, and there's my blue. So that's the first part of the experiment. And uh, they have a lot of fun. If I, if I let them do this as a lab, they can do it as a lab, or I can do it as a demonstration either way. A lot of it depends on the time and where we are in the, in the course. But actually, that's, that's looking pretty good. Can you see that? that got a good close-up of that? Okay. All right. And let's just check my beaker. Still looks pretty good. Still a lot of CO2 in there. All right. Now, the, the kids will want to know, how do we get back? How can we get back again? Well, if you use small bottles of seltzer like this, you have a ready available source of carbon dioxide. It's already inside the bottle. So if you just pop the top a little bit, take the tip cap off, and just draw the CO2 back up through, put the tip cap back on, force it back in, shake, 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 again, Okay, and you can force that equilibrium all the way back again. All right, and depending on the level of my students, depends on how much you get into this. My low-level stu students are just comparing color changes and getting the idea that we can go back and forth. And that's usually enough to get them through the questions that uh, appear on the state test in equilibrium. All right, now the second thing you can do is you can also do a temperature. You can, they can also take a look at how the solubility of the carbon dioxide changes with temperature. So I've got a couple more syringes. And I'm going to again put about two milliliters of the original solution in. That's pretty good. Not bad eyeball. Okay, and then I'm going to draw up another three from my seltzer bottle up to about five. Right about there. And then I'm going to cap it. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and put one in ice. All right, so we'll leave that there. And we'll take the temperature in a minute. And again, if you take the temperature, then you can take a look at how the solubility changes with temperature. If you had a variety of temperatures, if I were doing this with my uh, higher level students in my honors class, for example, then I would have them have a series of hot baths, that are water baths, and ice baths that are at different temperatures. Okay, so now I've got hot water here. Do the same thing. Add a couple milliliters. Not quite as good that time eyeballing it. And again, if you have a little bit of uh, headspace at the top, you can just get rid of it by just very carefully pushing on the plunger. All right, and we'll do the same thing. We'll draw up about about three milliliters of carbon dioxide gas. And again, this is continually uh, forming gas inside there until it goes flat. And usually in a period, um, you know, it lasts for, for at least an hour. Okay. And then we can go ahead and put that in the uh, beakers. Now, depending on how long you leave them, if you look at the equilibrium, so you have carbon dioxide and water because it's carbonic acid, but it's really dissolved carbon dioxide. So you have car carbon dioxide as aqueous solution, and you end up with your, your hydrogen ions and your bicarbonate ion. I would also, when I'm working with my students, I would ask them what this uh, equilibrium constant means, uh, especially uh, how small it is. And hopefully, they would be able to give me the answer that that means that the reactant side is favored versus the products. And now we can go ahead and take a look. Hopefully, I'm going to change my volume in my syringes. Okay, and it looks like I do. 
Well, not quite. They need to sit in there just a bit longer. You know, and also, you know, a lot of kids, I mean, they drink tons of soda, but they have no idea how it's made. And so part of, part of the uh, evaluation or the lab write-up, if we're doing this as a lab, then I would have them investigate, well, how do you make soda? Now, it's not pop in the East, it's soda. Out West, it's pop. It's not soda. So when I first went, uh, when I first moved to Massachusetts and I called it pop, they go, pop? What the heck's pop? And I said, well, you know, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, no, that's soda, you know. So you learn some of the uh, nuances of uh, living in different parts of the country. All right, my hot one's doing great. So let's get a shot of this. All right. Can you get a close-up of that? Remember, it started out at 5, and it's well over 7, approaching 8. And, of course, my color changed as well, so I could check that. Right about there. And again, the kids can eyeball this, and they're pretty good. Their eyes are much better than uh, those of us who are over 50. Okay. And let's see if my cold one has changed at all. Not nearly as much. And again, I, my students might ask me, well, why is that? And I said, well, what's the difference in temperature? So for example, if I, if I use my digital thermometer, we can take the, the temperature of the ice Okay, all right, so, all right, that looks like I'm reading it upside down and backwards, so let me turn it around for just a second. About 3.9, is that close? Okay, and then we'll do the same thing in the hot one. We'll pull that out. And you got a shot of that? Okay. And it's 77. So my change in temperature in the hot water bath is well over 50. And it's under about 20 for my uh, ice bath. So I'm not changing the temperature as much. And so I would ask them if they think that makes a difference in how much gas is going to be absorbed or uh, uh, released, depending on whether it's hot or cold. Thank you.